So in topic seven, we mostly addressed address uh three things. Um, first, the equation of a circle. Um, also, we go over a couple formulas, um, such as the distance formula and the midpoint formula. So this um, topic is not so complicated. Um, we're going to go over uh, these elements in it. So first, let's talk about the uh, standard form of the equation of a line, of the equation of a, of a circle, the standard form of the equation of a circle. So as you can see here, if you take a circle, you know, for a circle, there is a the center of the circle, the three, the two particular elements of a circle, if it's center, it's center and it's, it's radius. So if you have the center and you have the radius of the circle, then you can write the its equation, both in standard form and in the other form or in the general form. The standard form of a circle that is centered at a point x1, y1 with the radius r is given by this formula. So x minus x1 squared plus y minus y1 squared equals r squared. So that's the standard form. We can just apply this to this um, example that um, is given to us in this example, in this, with the x1, y1, negative two, power, negative two, and the radius r equals uh, 14. So we can just plug in these values in, for x1, y1, and r, that will give you the exact um, result for the the equation in standard form of the circle, in standard form. So the standard form would be x minus x1, which is negative two squared plus y minus y1 squared, that is equal to 14 squared. If we simplify y1, we have it that's negative two. So we're gonna put it negative two. So that is x plus one, uh, two squared plus y plus two squared equals 196. That is the equation of the circle in standard form. x plus two squared plus y plus two squared equals 196. So one thing I want you to see here, the other form is when the, the general form of the equation of a circle would be when you expand the, the two parts, this part and this part, I'm just going to make this remark here because later on we will need to, to convert the general form to standard form. So that's the best moment for me to make this remark. Uh, how to transform the standard form to the general form. So this form is the standard form. Now, if we expand x plus 2 squared, that will be x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus 
y squared plus 4y plus 4 equals 196. And if we combine that terms, that will be, and, and we group the squared terms, so that will be x squared plus y squared plus 4x plus 4y plus six plus eight minus one ninety six. I move the I subtract ninety six on both sides equals zero. And if we combine this, it will be uh, x squared plus y squared plus four x plus four uh, y minus 188 equals zero. So that is the general form of the same, that's the general form of the same circle, e equate of the same equation of the circle. So that's the general form. The reason I do this one is because Later on, we will think about we will think about going from this form to this one. So I already show you how to go from the standard form to the general form. And the one thing I want you to remember as you we we will be we will be working on from general form to standard form is you need to remember the complete the square, how to complete, complete the square. Remember when we were solving, um, we were solving equations, um, quadratic equation by complete the square. Basically the, the idea would be if I have X, plus x squared plus six x, I can find the other term that will complete this uh, to be a perfect square. So to complete the perfect square, you would need to add the coefficient of x divided by two squared to this that will give you the complete format of the square. But if you add it, you need to subtract it because you don't want to change the expression. You add and subtract six divided by two squared. So that will make it x squared plus six x. In this case, that plus nine minus nine, plus nine minus nine is zero, but automatically this will be a square. How do you get that square? Well, square root of this is X, this sign plus, and then square root of this three, and then the square. It's automatically the square that you want that will give you the first part of this expression but in this case it wasn't the same that's why it's three but we just imagine if we had a situation where we had the first the term in x that are x squared plus six x um but in this case it would have been x squared in this situation it would have been this x squared plus four x and then then that would be the two the four over two instead of six over two squared, which is clearly four. But I'm just, I, I just took another example for you here. Now, and then you would include that part that you subtracted negative nine. So that's how you complete the square. Later on, we will practice more on that. But let's move on to the next example here in this problem. Remember at the beginning, I 
mentioned two formulas that we're going to work with. First is the, the distance formula. And the second one is the midpoint formula. The distance formula is derived from the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is when you have a right triangle like this one, the, the longest side of the right triangle is the, right, the square root of the sum of the square of the arms of the right angle. Now we will imagine that those points A and B are points in the coordinate system with which have an X and a Y coordinate. And the distance from the distance, the length of this arm would be the distance from the two values. So that's the distance X minus X1 minus 1, X2 minus 1. That is the uh well, actually, that is, that should be Y over here. That's Y. Oops. The horizontal distance is Y, is X. And then the vertical distance is, is Y. So we're going to change that here because... It wouldn't change much, but it's still not right. So we're going to fix it here. So the read the, the the distance the Horizontal distance is uh, so that's that should be x that should be y minus uh Okay. So the uh, horizontal distance is X2 minus X1, and the vertical distance is Y2 minus Y1. Well, still, it would be the same thing inside of the formula, but which I just wanted to make sure that it looks the right way on your end. And now the distance would be, so basically the A here, the A would be X2 minus X1. And the B would be, y2 minus y1 and then when we replace them in this formula c would be the distance of the two points d and then it would give you this formula um d equals the square root of x2 minus x1 squared squared plus y2 minus y1 squared and then if you consider two points, A, X1, Y1, B, X2, Y2, in the coordinate system, the midpoint, the halfway through going from one to another, if I call it M as the midpoint, then it's going to be found by adding the X values divided by two, for the x coordinate of the midpoint and the y coordinate of the midpoint would be adding the y coordinates and divided by two. So based on that, we can we can use this to
we can use this to you can use this uh the distance formula to solve our next example here that is use the distance formula this one use the distance formula to find the distance between the following pair of points this is the pair of points that means x1 equals negative 5 y1 is 1 x2 is 4 and y2 is 4 then bring them into this formula right here so the distance between the two points will be the square root of x2 that's 4 minus x1 negative 5 squared plus y2 4 minus y1 1 squared and then now we can perform the operations inside of the radicals radical that is 9 squared plus 3 squared the square root of that and then square root of 81 plus 27 that equals the square root of 108. So we must simplify this to get the correct answer. Um, 108. Well, that's uh, that's not one, uh, 27, that's nine. Three, three squared is three times three equals nine. So that's nine. And then you have that that is also 90. And 90 is square root of nine times 10 or square root of nine times square root of 10. So that is three square root of 10. So this is the distance of the two points, negative five, one and four, four. So distance is three square root of 10, three square root of 10. And by the way, I just want to make sure that you understand if I am making some mistakes, everyone can too. So it's just, you don't learn without making mistakes. So it's just a reminder for everyone to pay attention to every single um, operation. So this is not, I mean, an actual mistake, it's just, me seeing the three, I, I thought that I had a three to the third that would give me 27. And then I fix it right away. So some of you may have already seen that I made a mistake by putting the 27 here. It's just that it's not confu confusion on your side. It's just we're doing math and you could see that mistake can be made, but needed to be fixed. So that's why... I'm okay making mistakes and you may have already seen it before I went back and fix it. Just wanted to make this comment here. All right, next example here is we want to find the midpoint here of the two points, nine, four, five, negative two. I'm going to call x1 here and y1. x1 is 9, y1 is 4. x2, I take it as 5, and then y2. 
it's just for me to keep everything in place, not to confuse um, when I'm getting my values. So the midpoint would be when you add the x1, y1, so that's 9 plus 5 over 2, 4 plus negative 2 over 2, that would be the midpoint for, for the, the two points here. So let's um, add this. That's 14 over 2. Uh, two minus, 4 minus 2 is 2 over 2. Simplify this as 7, 1. 7, 1 is the midpoint of of nine four and five negative two seven one next example this one is what we were talking about earlier when i mentioned about the general form of the equation of a line here you can see this format is the same as the problem that is given to us. Now, what we are trying to do is to transform this general form of the equation of a circle into standard form. Now, what we are do, what we need to do is to organize all the variables together and then complete the square for both x and y. So I'm going to rewrite my equation, rearrange the terms. First, I will add, move the constant term to the other side, add 56 on both sides. My equation becomes, I'm going to rearrange the terms, x squared plus 4x. I'm going to leave some space here so I can put the value that will complete the square plus y squared plus 4y. Leave some space for to replace the term to complete that square as well, equals 56. Now, what we need to remember when we try to complete the square earlier, because I did not have an equation, I added and subtracted the same value. But in this case, what I can do is I can add the same value on both sides of my equation. So I won't change my equation because if you add something on one side of the equal sign, you don't add it on the other side, it changes your equation. And this is not what we want. We don't want to change the equation. We want to keep it the same, but we want to write it on a different format. So that's why we want to keep it the same. If we add something on each side, whatever I add here, I'm going to add it here too. Same thing here and there. Now, what do we add? We should add this value, the coefficient of x divided by two squared. So that's four divided by two squared. I should do it here too, four divided by two squared, we add it. We will do the same thing here. This coefficient, we would add, we would divide it by two, we add it here, divide by two squared. So we do the same thing here. The value, the coefficient of y, divide by two squared. Now, let me rewrite this in a better format. So that is x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus y squared plus 4y plus 4 equals 56 plus 4 plus 4 which is 64. Sixty-four. 
Now we can write a perfect square for this one and a perfect square for this one. I set up my parentheses squared plus another square equals, this is also a perfect square, so that's eight squared. So square root of this, that's X. This sign, it's a plus. And then square root of four, that's two. Now, some of you may say, well, what is the four X? Well, the four X will be seen when you expand this again by foil. If you X plus two squared is X plus two times X plus two. If you foil it, it will give you that middle term here. So that's why you don't have to bother, bother, be bothered by not seeing it. It's there, but it's written in a different format. That's why you don't see it, but it's there. And if you want to see it, you can just foil this and then it would be the same as this one. But I already showed you how to go from this one to this one by taking the square root of each um, end and, and start term. So the this term take the square root of it, this term take the square root, and then use the sign here to separate them and take the square on the outside. You never want to forget to, to put the square on the outside. Otherwise, it's not going to end up being the same result after you expand it. So you want to apply the, the this rule, but also keep the square on the outside. So what is this, the next one? Think about it, pause the video, try it. It will be y plus two squared. And that is your standard form from this form to the standard form. So your standard form is x plus two squared plus y plus two squared equals, equals eight squared or 64 if you wanna leave it this two. x squared, x plus two squared plus y plus two squared equals eight squared. So, the center would be this one and this one. But in the formula, if you remember, in the formula, there was a negative sign, right? Now, if you see a plus, it means that you had two negative signs. It means it was x minus negative 2 squared. So the x coordinate of the center is negative two because we want to preserve the negative sign in the formula. So that's negative two. And then the y would, was y minus negative two squared. So that's negative two here. Well, obviously that's a plus. That's why you have a plus here. But whenever you have a plus, you need to think about switching the sign to find the center of the circle. And then the radius is the base of the square. So basically, if you kept the 64, you should have, you should take the, the square root of that 64 to get the radius, or if you keep it with something squared, so it's just going to be that eight, that is your, your radius. Now, how do we, graph this circle. Well, first we want to find the center. Let's see what, what's the center. Center is negative two, negative two. So it will be here. And the radius is eight. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. So those are the points on the circle. And then I can just connect them. Oops, it's not the... Uh... Okay, um, it's not going to look perfect, but the point will indicate what we have. So the point will indicate the, the they're not perfect because the um, the grid is not square. But that's uh, the circle here that we just have, which is the center negative two, negative two, and the radius, The radius is r equals eight. And we are also asked to find the domain and the range, but basically you can you just read the numbers, but if you didn't have it graphed, this is the formula you would use to find the domain and the range. So domain would be uh, for, um, the x1, x1 was what? Negative two minus the radius that is eight comma x1 negative two plus the radius that is eight. So that is, domain is, negative 10 to positive six, that's a domain and you can see that, that's positive six and that's negative 10. But if you have the center and the radius, you can find the domain without having the actual graph of the circle. So domain is from negative 10 to six and the range is y1 that is negative two plus r that is eight comma negative two y1 my that's minus the first one is minus plus eight. So that equals negative six, I'm sorry, from negative 10 to positive six. From negative 10 to positive six. Let's do another example Example of this, the same type of equation. So this one, x squared plus, I'm going to rearrange them and add 11 on both sides, plus 8x, leave some room, plus y squared minus 6y, leave some room here equals 11. Now we're going to complete the square by adding eight divided by two squared, adding six divided by two squared, but we should add them on both sides as well. If you wanna keep the negative six, it's fine ben, because when you square it, it's still gonna give you a positive result. That's why I didn't care about that negative sign here. We're gonna care about it when we are setting up the squares, but for now we can just write with the six without worrying about the negative sign. Now this is X squared plus six, uh, sorry, plus eight X plus eight divided by two is four squared is 16 plus 
y squared minus six, six y, six divided by two is three squared is nine, that equals 11 plus 16 plus nine, which is, um, that's uh, 2036. Now we can write the square for the x's plus the square for the y's equals six squared. Then that, that is x plus four, and that is y minus three. So the standard form, or you can keep the 36, it's fine too. Um, that is x plus four squared plus y minus three squared equals six squared. Center is, that's negative four, switch the signs, that's positive three. And then the radius is six. So look for a negative four, a positive three here. That is the here. Negative four, positive three. The radius is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a point here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that is also six. Also six. And then lastly, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we connect them to make the circle. So that's a circle. I didn't really need this. I just wanted to see. So center is negative four, three, and then radius is six. And then we can give the domain and range for that the same way we calculated the domain and range, but this time I'm just gonna take them from the graph given we, we can find it on the graph and we have the graph. If we didn't have the graph, that's what we would use to find it, but we have the graph. We can read the graph and give the domain. So domain is from negative 10 to positive two and the range is from negative three to nine. Well, the graph doesn't show the perfect spotting, but of, yeah, that's that's what we get. Okay, so that's it for uh, section three point seven.
and I hope you are well prepared and stu you study it well to get ready for your next test, test number two.